Hey guys, this is Dan Wolak from Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Today we're going to talk about making a tripod for a round camp and the versatility of that tripod. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay, so to construct a tripod when we're at camp or in the bush, um, just setting up camp for an evening, is quite a simple task. And making a tripod is more about learning a lashing than it is actually constructing the tripod. So that's really what we're going to focus on. But as far as making the tripod, three sticks of equal length. These sticks are about five feet in length. They were green saplings from, a birch, from birch trees. We're going to use some bank line to actually make our lashings. Now these sticks are probably an inch and a half in diameter. They're a little bit thicker than I normally use for sticks, but I'm actually making this tripod to hang a heavy cast iron Dutch oven off of with a piece of chain once it's all said and done for more of a stationary type camp. So you definitely don't need anything this big and heavy if you're just gonna hang bush pots or anything off it like that. So basically to start, what we're gonna do is you wanna make sure all that your tripod legs are cut to length so they're all the same size. And I normally, as a good rule of thumb, come in anywhere from six inches to eight inches to start my lashings. And what I like to do with my saplings is just twist and turn them until I can get them somewhat lined up and close together, as you can see here. We don't have huge gaps. If we would turn some of this stuff, some knots would get in the way further up, and then we're dealing with big gaps and big spaces, and we wouldn't want to do that. So I'm going to reposition the camera right now, get a close-up, walk you guys through how to actually do a lashing like this so we can get our cordage back if need be. If not, then just keep your tripod around and you'll have it for a good long time. So I'm going to get that resituated and we'll start talking about how to lash this thing together. Okay, so when you cut your saplings, a good idea always is to cut an extra piece. You have a toggle, that way you can pull and tighten up our lashings as we go along here. And of course for this I'm going to use some bank line. You can use paracord, you can use hemp line, anything like that that you would want. In another video I'm going to actually go over how to make a tripod with no cordage in more of a primitive sense. But for this one we're going to talk about lashing these together. So like I said, you really want to make sure everything's evened up. You want to make sure that your sticks that you're going to be lashing together mend well together. So just twist and turn them and you'll quickly see how they fit together. You might have to just play around with that a little bit. But what that's going to do is that's going to ensure that everything works out better in the long run. So as you can see in this spot, they're fitting together quite well. So I'm going to sort of keep them like that for now. And what I'm going to do is just lay them on my haversack here. So as far as for cordage, there's a couple different ways to do this. My prefer preferred method is to initially take out maybe one and a half times the length of your tripod, two times the length if you have more than enough cordage to start your wraps and just simply cut it off. So having a little bit extra isn't going to hurt anything whatsoever. Having too little though um, can sacrifice overall in how your lashings hold up over time with some weight. So what I like to do is I normally start out by just putting a jam knot on one end and I like to leave somewhat of a tail on my cordage. And then from there, I actually just make a simple slip knot just like this, okay? So this loop, when I pull here, is actually can close in, okay? So I'm gonna start on my first stick just like this. Now there's different ways to start. This way seems best for me. Work it around a little bit, get it good and tight. Now, wrappings this way are gonna be our, our lashings. Inside between these are our frappings, okay? So what we wanna initially do, again, is make sure everything is evened out and situated, and then we're gonna start our lashings okay one big thing I see people always mess up with this is not keeping them nice and tight and nice and neat take your time get it right the first time 
and then you don't have to mess around at all with it. Okay. Now these first couple are always a little bit tricky, just in the sense that your sticks are going to want to slide around. Okay. So I usually like to put three at a time in. I put three in, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my toggle, wrap it around, and then I usually try to use my knee and just tighten everything up just like that. So that cordage is really binding on there now. Okay, release that and just continue. So I'm gonna actually make six passes here. Three and I'm gonna tighten it. Three more I'm gonna tighten it. And then we're gonna look at how much stability we're gonna have with six lashings. Because like I said, this is gonna hold some heavier weight than normal. It's not just going to be a small bush pot. So I really want to make sure that when I make this, it's good and strong and not going to go anywhere. Okay. So I think I'm going to add two more lashings to this. Again, keeping them dressed up real nice and neat. Dig that tail out. If you have any spots that sort of slide apart just take your a stick or your toggle push it back together Get one more in there now I'm gonna tighten this up give it a good pull and you can really feel that line bite into there and that's what you want you want this good and tight okay so now that our lashings are complete, we want to begin our frappings. So a good rule of thumb is that for every three lashings, put one frapping. If you can, if you're only going to put three lashings, three frappings would be fine. With this, I'm going to probably put three or four frappings um, and go forward from there. So this is where a lot of people, I think, get hung up a little bit. You want to take your last lashing, okay, and you're going to go underneath so wherever you're lashing in so my lashing ends on the bottom I wrap downward my first frapping is going to go on the bottom side to continue just like this okay and then if I need to work my sticks at all to loosen that up a little bit to get that up in there I can and bring it up now that first one as you can see that looks a little bit sloppy, so I'm going to drop that on the ground. Use my toggle again. And start to work that up a little bit. We want this good and tight. And as you can see how I'm doing that, just twist and turn it a little bit. careful that doesn't happen just push it back down in place just make sure you're first frapping like I said is where it should be there we go okay so we're going to continue by going over the top down the bottom now we're just wrapping around. Okay. And as you can see, some of that bark's getting pulled off, but that's okay. That means it's good and tight. That ain't gonna hurt anything at all. Just get that out of the way. And with your frappings, the same with your lashings, keep them nice and orderly just going to help keep this more and more stable. Get that tag end out of the way. And this will be my third wrapping on here. 
Okay. So, I'll show you guys what we're working with right here. So we have our lashings in place. This is the tag end from the beginning. And then our three frappings. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to take our cordage and go back down where we ended off as if we're going to continue with one more frapping, okay? But this time, when we pull it up, okay, I'm going to come across the middle one. And start to bring this one up. And just adjust my sticks a little bit to get it up there. Pull and continue on with two more frappings between these sticks. As you can see, I'm using this toggle for these frappings almost every frapping. It just makes it much easier, it gets them a lot tighter. one. I'm actually going to pull that. Pull that good and tight. Okay guys, so I'll show you guys up close now. So Overall, that's what your lashing and frapping should look like. Now, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to finish this. We're going to use a clove hitch. And I'm actually going to do the clove hitch up here just for demonstration purposes. Okay? What we're doing with the clove hitch is you're going to make an X. Okay? Just like that. So we have an X. Our tag end, okay, that we're still working with. This is still the part we were lashing and frapping with. Goes in between the two parts of the X. Just like that. Okay? So as you can see, you have an X with basically a line through it. And then you're going to pull that tight, work them together, and you should be well set from that point to finish everything off. So what you want to do is my last frapping ended on this side, so I'm going to make my X right here. And this takes sometimes, this, some people struggle with this, and I think it's just because everything's starting to really get tight, everything's starting to get bound up here. So you really want to just work with this. Take your time. You need to move your tripod legs around to get a good hitch in here. And by all means, do that. Okay. Sometimes you've got to loosen it up a little bit. So I have my X. Pull that through. Show you guys quickly what we're look working with here. So I have my middle piece coming through my X. And this is a really important last step. This is finishing off our entire lash. So you want to get this and really pull nice and tight with this. Make sure everything 
is tightened up. Now I have extra cordage, but I'm going to show you guys what we can do with this. So if you still want to maybe tighten up some more, you can by all means put a half hitch in around something. I'm pretty content with that, but I am still going to just stick a half hitch in because I have so much cordage left. So I'll just pull a half hitch on there and that's our lashing for our tripod. So let me back the camera up now and we can actually look at what the tripod looks like set up. Okay guys, so here's the tripod all set up. Breaks down very easily. Sets up very easily. Okay. Now, if you're just around camp, this tag end that's left over, absolutely awesome. You could just throw over the top, put a toggle on here, hang your bush pot, hang your stainless steel water bottle, keep your water warm once it boils if it's in the winter time. If you watched any of my other videos, you can wrap hides around this to smoke hides. You can smoke meat on this if you build yourself a rack. If you're not using it around your campfire, you can hang your gear to get it up out of the dirt. Anything like that. You can even use this if you wanted to, to put the front of your tarp on. Um, like I showed in my plow point tarp video, you'd be able to use this rather than a tree. You need to get maybe get a little bit closer to a campfire or anything like that. And of course, this is extremely sturdy. Um, I'm 235 pounds and it's holding me. So I know my Dutch oven I'm going to be placing on here is definitely not 235 pounds. So I should have no problem whatsoever with this. So this is a quick down and dirty lashing for a tripod. This lashing, if you learn this, it's a great tool to know when you're out in the woods. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a bunch more coming real soon. This was Dan Wolwak with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Thanks for joining, guys.